Viewers and subscribers, welcome back to Beating the Press Podcast. I am your host, Rafa. Now, this evening, we're going to be previewing the quarterfinal matchup, Jamaica versus Guatemala. Now, joining me this evening to preview this big match, we have returned into the platform, Speedy. Big up to the viewers and subscribers. You don't know who they are represent. Yes, sir, Speedy. Welcome back. And this evening, we're going to be talking some football. We're going to be talking knockout stages of the Gold Cup. Yeah. Jamaica versus Guatemala. I mean, we saw Jamaica, you know, dismantling St. Kitts 5 nil to make it into the second round. I mean, your, your predictions there were spot on. I mean, just a quick word. How did you see that game? What, what was the performance up to the standard you anticipated? Performance wise, to an extent, um, I, I still think that we're... um, Nicholson, I must say, yeah, I, I can see why he's on the bench. <laughs> um, that was not a good game at all, especially against a uh, poor opposition like that. But I mean, I thought the first couple goals were really constructed. You know, um, I saw a bit of rhythm. Not that it was hard to achieve against an opponent like that. But, you know, there were still patterns, positivity coming out of um the previous game coming into this one. So we can see that the coach, you know, is instilling form of some form of know it, um, know it how how to handle these games. Um uh, I thought that Gray Gray played well, not singling out anybody, but I thought that Gray and Gray really <laughs> played well. You know. Ah the yeah, I mean the wingers, the wingers were good. With 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 what little um test the defense got they stood up, right? And right. um, you know I did predict seven nil. Uh, I'll take a five nil. Uh, I think that a lot of people thought that Trinidad would have helped us, but I mean, <laughs> uh, they they went down six nil, so we really had it to do ourselves. And um, I think that's the reason. Even maybe why we didn't score as much goals because I know probably on the sidelines somebody was saying, Oh, so 3 nil, this keeping that. them up to date. So the team kind of maybe you know take the foot off the gas a bit, but all in all, I thought it was a you know a good performance considering the opposition. Yes, I guess with our 5 nil victory, it's hard to fault the performance. And you know, we needed a win to secure ourselves in the second round. And of course, we had no control over what was taking place elsewhere. So you, we could only do the job ourselves. And job well done. Uh, the coach giving a number of players an opportunity to showcase their talent as well. And, you know, be, be, be part of that team, that, that unity, that uh, obviously, Hell Grimson is trying to instill in the team, and we can definitely see where it would appear from the results and from the performances that the team is moving in the right direction. And uh, I'm seeing a number of posts on social media where it, the, the camp look nice, you know. <laughs> it's all fun so, and laughter um, in the camp one currently. One thing about Jamaican camps, since they're in the competition, it will always see nice, so. Yeah, yeah, you know, vibes, vibes, vibes in the vibes camp. Is always around the team, you know. So that's one thing we can look forward to with any um, Jamaican team. Yes, definitely. And, you know, I saw an interview there with Leon Bailey as well, you know, really telling the Jamaicans to, hey, keep calm and just support the team, you know. Don't, don't be naive to the, to the ball game and all these things. So, you know, the players seem to be hearing what the fans are saying and that expectation and that anticipation is definitely building, especially with this quarterfinal matchup against Guatemala. I mean, from a fan point of view, this should be an easy win for Jamaica. What say you, Speedy? I mean, we are here to look at this game, to dissect it, to break it down. But Jamaica versus Guatemala, I believe Guatemala is ranked about 116th in the world. <laughs> you know, by the FIFA rankings. <laughs> so, what say you? How do you see this one? How do you see this matchup? Um, even if, well, I mean, even if they are ranked that low, um, we all know that the uh, FIFA rankings are not necessarily a true reflection of mm. um specific team qualities. Uh I would say that they are not the most gifted um technically team in 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 Kankatov. But one thing they can do is move the ball around. Um, they do have uh, people who can square the ball well, you know, who can dribble out of trouble. 
one aspect of the game that I think Jamaica should try and attack them with is, you know, set pieces, you know, ball into the area. Because I don't think they're the tall, one of the tallest teams in the competition. So I think that it would be to our strengths, you know, get that ball in early, you know, try to put them under a bit of pressure. Um, we know that people with um low center gravity, you know, they get they tend to get stuck in. They tend to be able to tackle well. So I don't think that we should be trying to necessarily over dribble, you know, try to beat four or five people um in this game. I think that passing in and putting the ball into the box might serve us very well. And um, I wouldn't say it would be a easy or expected game to win because you know we all know how knockout football is. Um, and the ball is gone, you never know. One goal might let you lose a match, one moment of error. So we have to go into that game uh, just as serious as you would um, against an opponent and put the game away early. Yes, I mean, we were drawn on the Mexican side of the grid as well. You know, you know, with victory over Guatemala, then it's a potential semi-final matchup with the Mexicans. Potentially, if they get through their as well but it just goes to show how i would say weak that zone was speedy i mean guatemala tapped their zone over canada i mean canada you know and um, guatemala came out and tapped the zone wasn't that, that wasn't um, um canada's strongest team was it well uh, it, it, uh, it's uh, a mix uh, of I youth and experience the, it, it's a mix it's not their strongest the, team i believe there were there was any Davis in that team. Right, I'm right, sure. right. Yeah, a few key so, players were missing, but I we, mean we, we have to we have to take it for what it is. <laughs> yes, the um Guatemala have the group, but it's not really a true reflection of the overall quality of mm. Canada. However, um it would benefit us if we were to draw any of those teams in the latter stages. Right, Full right, right. Not, um I think that, you know, we probably put up a good performance against either team. But, Mm. Um, I think um now is probably one of the best times for us to reach deep into this competition. Definitely. That the team's not having their best players out there. We have a new team, even though it's full of quality. Right. Um, but it's quality nonetheless. So I think that we 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 can go very deep into this competition. Yes, that, that is definitely the hope. And I mean the fans will definitely be anticipating. I would say a routine win over Guatemala. And I mean, uh, as you would say, if, if you can't be this team, then you don't deserve to be in I the competition, to... <laughs> you know? <Exactly. laughs> but in terms of the tactics and the team selection, though, Speedy, how, how do you see Hell Grimson lining up for this one? Do, do you anticipate any changes? And do you expect any tactical, you know, formation changes or, you know, approach to the game in general? How, how do you think he will approach what is now really a knockout tournament? You know, it's win or go home from this point in. And if penalties come into play as well. Well, um, I don't think I'll see or we'll see much changes um, from how we set up in the first game against the U. I That's think right. that he will come into this game with the same approach in terms of formation and personnel. Mm -hmm. In terms of, I'm not sure if Pinock will be back. Um, no, no, Pin Pinock has no. Any news on that. No, Pinock has no reported to Brentford preseason training. So okay, so no, no Pinock for this tournament. Competition. Yes, okay. Pinock is officially. Well, regardless, um, regardless of, the, I think we still have a strong defense. But um, in ter any changes in the defense, though, approach, Speedy? Any, I mean, in the first game we saw Mariapa getting the start alongside Low. Do you do you think? Yeah, uh, he'll return to Mariapa, or do you think Bernard has done enough to to get a starting berth uh, alongside Low? You know, Low who was suspended and obviously. Can you repeat that. Um, I didn't hear. No, I'm I saying didn't hear the last part. in the first that? game, in the first game, uh, he lined up with Mariapa and Low as the two centre backs, but I'm saying Bernard came in for Mariapa uh, in the last two games and have done fairly well. Do you think he will revert to Mariapa? Or do you think the two starting centre backs will be Bernard and Low? Well, I think um the nature of Low and you know how he, he tends to get carried away sometimes. I think that he probably will go for that experience hit beside Low, mm. as opposed to you know a younger Bernard who might not be able to say okay, calm down, 
you know, right, don't be right. so rash. Don't run in like that. I think that probably he will be looking for a mixture of experience and grit um, in the defense. So I think that Mariapa will get the start. But either way, if 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 Bernard if Bernard Bernard does have European experience nonetheless, so once Lo is willing to listen and understand the game, then you know it probably still would work out if it was Lo and Bernard. But I think he will go with um Mariapa and uh, Lo. Yeah, that should definitely be an interesting one to watch. My money, though, is on Bernard Lowe partnership. I, I think Maria Appa time has come to an end. And looking forward, it to me, it makes greater sense to give the youngster the, the playing experience, you know, and develop that partnership between Bernard and Lowe, you know, going forward and, you know, going into the World, the World Cup qualifying campaign. But we will definitely see. And I mean, Blake Blake should return in Golden Speedy. Yeah, definitely. And uh, what of the the wing backs, right back, left back? Um, um, I think that he'll still work with um the tested and proven Bill, and um the other one under the I think that they, yeah, I think that um they are both shown that they are quality tacklers. And um against a stocky Guatemalan team, I think that um tackling and you know reading the game will be very important as soon as have um let them in behind or you know let them create space um where we shouldn't. So I think that he will continue using those players. Yeah, definitely. I, I feel they have definitely uh stood up against the whatever opposition have come their way thus far in the competition and Obviously, they are cementing themselves as the go-to right back and left back for this Jamaican team. You know, uh, the days of Kemar Definitely. Lawrence seem to be nearing its end, or you know, he's pretty much playing backup to to Bell over there on the left hand side. So, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I would mix a few youth and experience. It's needed. <laughs> well, definitely, you need the the, the experienced yeah. guys to give some positive advice. But it's the youngsters it's who is going to get the start. You know, with that youthful that exuberance, true. the pace, and of course the energy. You know, sometimes it's, you just have to call a spade a spade. You know, I mean, Lawrence has been a good servant for Jamaica. You know, same with Mariapa, but we can definitely see the writing is now on the wall. And, you know, going forward, the, the youngsters need that game time to develop that experience and, and showcase their talent as well. But going to the midfield now, Speedy, this should be an interesting one. In the center of the park, we see the coach continuing with the 4-4-2 formation. So who, who, who are your two central midfielders and does Reed return to the starting eleven? Uh Well... I think this would be a game where decisive passes, you know, um, on the ball, calm hits on the ball would, 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 would benefit us. So um, I think that you stick with that tested and proven midfield from the USA game. Okay, so, so we definitely returns to the fall. That is right. And you have you would have Gray on the on on the other side and Lati Bodir should be controlled yes. in the middle right there. Yes. Surprisingly, um I, I, I didn't know much about him before, <laughs> but he has stood up in this tournament. So yes. He, I, he, I, Lati Bodir yeah, seems to be yeah. impressing your dear speedy. Yeah, he's a he's a that outside of the foot pass, you know, we haven't seen quality like that since Germany so you know, it's something for the I'm excited uh, about. I, I would go back as far as Whitmore, you know. I don't know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, you know, yeah. from that ninety eight campaign, I mean Whitmore was the man, so to speak, you know, in in the heart of the midfield there. Yeah. But you know, Latibod here is definitely uh proving himself useful inside the middle there and I'm not sure yeah. about who will be his partner in there, though. Johnson, to me, is taking a claim for, for that second central midfield uh, role with, with Latibo there, though, Speedy. I, I thought Johnson had a very impressive showing in that last game. I mean, as you say, it, it, it's saying kids, but, you know, nevertheless, coming off the bench in the other games, I, I think Johnson... John is definitely I, I putting pressure on the on the on the, the, the coach. So, um 
I think if you put a piece of stick in that St. Vincent game, he probably would have had a <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily use that as a measuring stick to mm. say, oh, he ran away. But he, he did well. But I that for him to unseat. Okay. Original. And then, of course, up front should be uh, Antonio uh, alongside Bailey. Yeah, definitely. I think that Antonio, with his physical press and, um, you know, exciting dribbling and, and hold-up play that he has brought to this tournament, I think that will help us very much against this um, Guatemala team. I think that once we, 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 we have a referee that isn't necessarily saying that we are being overly physical mm. and, um, you know, plays the game on its merit, then I right. think that, you know, we'll have a game. And he will be creating chances and, you know, he probably will get on that score sheet too. Yes, I mean, with all the goals flying in, it's surprising Antonio didn't get one to his name. I believe he did provide uh, uh, an assist, however. Assist, yes. Right, right, right. But, you know, as a striker, you, you always want to score, you know. So I'm sure he should be hungry to get on the scoreline. That is uh, true. But, you know, we've, we've had a lot <laughs> of strikers over the years who, you know, they haven't been scoring, neither have they been adding to the game in any other facet. So, mm. you know, at least he's all, you know, doing something else. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, benefiting the team. So, yeah. all he needs now is a goal. So, yeah, he has know, definitely he, been impressive throughout I, the tournament, I think that to be he honest. Will get this one, whether in, in this coming up, um, this game coming up or the next. Once yeah, he, he has been impressive. Case. I must say, you know, his really off come. the ball movement, uh, he's running into the channels, especially on that left hand side. You know, he yes. tends to drift out wide, run into the channels, uh, getting behind the defense and you know, putting across some some dangerous passes. And of course, his physicality up front as well. He, you know, he he's drawing some falls, and you made mention of set piece might be the the way to unlock this this potentially stubborn. Definitely. Guatemala and defense, you know. But I was looking at that Guatemala game versus uh Guadalupe Speedy. Mm -hmm. And the Guatemalan team, you know, they didn't look bad. Yeah, I don't as you as you made mention, their FIFA ranking doesn't tell the full story. It's definitely so, not a, a true reflection of the team, trust me. Yeah, I mean, you know, this Jamaican outfit can definitely uh, not count this Guatemalan team out and you know they should definitely be coming into this one with you know some tough games in that first round with you know a, a, a more tested team than the Jamaican you know I don't think any game in that first round for Guatemala was a walkover even though Cuba ended at the the, the bottom of that table they definitely put up a, a, a showing against them as well and Guadalupe, to be honest, in that room definitely impressed me. I'm a bit saddened that they didn't make it out because and they were, they were they playing were some exciting stuff, to be honest. You know, look out for that team, Guadalupe. That's a team to watch out for definitely. in this World it Cup qualifiers that, coming that, up. That, that, that they have been doing what we, we are doing now, um, you know, getting quite a these um players into their team. Yeah, it, it, they're playing almost like a French D team. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> that, that know, is true. Most of their so recruiting we, we, is coming we, we, from we France. We can definitely look forward to them in future tournaments. I think they could um, be a I dangerous think it team. all goes well for development of football in the region. I think that for too long we've been stagnant, you know, and I think that stagnant that stagnant nature has not helped Jamaica improve any at all. Mm. So you know, once the, the the level of the Caribbean improves, then you know it all goes well for Jamaica. As it relates to this Guatemalan team, um, they have a lot of experience in the tournament in terms of playing hard games. They have experience in terms of coming in behind. They have experience in terms of scoring late goals. You know, we as Jamaica going into that game, we can't take anything for granted. This team doesn't know when they're beaten. They don't give up. And we have, you know, uh, this tendency to drop our heads Whenever we can see that goal, you know, feed down. So it is very important for the coach to provide psychological help before, during, um, before and during the game, so that you know we keep that momentum up and realize that the game is not over until the final whistle. 
Ah, yeah, some strong words there. I, I, I hope that the viewing public, you know, will pass on that message to the scope speedy. And I mean, the, the, the podcast itself has been growing. So hopefully the message gets through to the players. God, that is some Definitely. very sound advice right there. But speedy, I mean, in terms of the scoreline, <laughs> you know, many right. of our viewers and subscribers may very well be waiting for the score because this podcast has definitely been hitting the, the, the correct calls of late. So in terms of the scoreline, how do you see this one playing out? Um, I'm going for an optimistic result. I'm saying 3-1 Jamaica. Um, my heart was telling me 2-1 earlier, but uh, mm. I'm going with 3 1 Jamaica. Okay. Yeah, that's an interesting scoreline. I myself expecting a very physical game from the Guatemalan, to be honest. Uh, I don't think they're going to show much respect to the Jamaican team, as has been the case with, I would say, Trinidad. You know, I thought Trinidad showed too much respect. They, they played the name and not necessarily the team. But for this Guatemalan yeah. outfit, I believe they will play the team. You know, they're not going to be watching the names. They're not going to be watching the Baileys and the Antonios and the Greys. They're going to be saying, hey, this is the team in front of us. Let's go out. Let's put our all in and let's, you know, match these guys physically, you know, hard running, uh, energetic play. So for me, I think it's going to be a tighter affair than the 3-1. I am going to go with a 2-1 for Jamaica, you know, it, it's knockout round football right now, Speedy. So it may very well go to extra time and Jamaica may just have a little bit more quality and take this one in extra time, to be honest. You know, it, it, it wouldn't surprise me if it, if it went into full time 1-1 one, one, and then extra time maybe needed to separate these two teams. But at the end of the day, I feel Jamaica should progress. I think... You know, it will be a very disappointing situation if we were knocked out at this stage, especially against this Guatemalan outfit. So I'm as as you say, I'm approaching this one optimistic as well. And we'll be definitely hoping for a two one victory and Jamaica progressing on to the semifinal. We are, as I said, waiting in the wings could potentially be a Mexico Jamaica matchup. So we'll see, though, this one taking place, of course, on Sunday speedy. I'm sure your your alarm clock is already set. Definitely. I'm looking forward to this game. Um and I'm expecting an excellent game from Gray and Antonio. I think that you know the English place will take this one home for us. Um, you know, that bit of quality over the line. Um, in my opinion, I don't really think that Central American teams think that um we should be beating them. Um, I think that they have a level of um, audacity as it relates to their level of football in Paris as opposed to ours. And, you know, that may, may very well work against them in this game. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to, to our quality players stepping up and, you know, winning this one for Jamaica. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's the anticipation that, you know, the cream will rise to the top and the Guatemala may come with, you know, uh, you know, their physicality, their hard running. If the Jamaicans can match that physicality, that fight, and of course, remaining calm under pressure, then... And of I've, course, being yeah. clinical, you know, we can't go into that game missing <laughs> the clear-cut chances. Well, you definitely. Know, I, I mean, once the chances uh, come, you have to bury those chances. Yeah, you know, we, we, at the end of the day, gold win matches. Very cynical in that game. Ah, uh, yes. indeed, indeed. It may go very well. As, as I said, I expect it to be a tight one. So, you know, once chances are presented, then you would expect the quality of those, of, of at least the front four in the Jamaican team to really snap up the chances. You know, Bobby Reed, for example, has been guilty of that in, in the past games where he true. may have been through on, on goal but snatched at his chances and, you know, that chance went begging. So, yeah, you know, once we can execute on the day, then I feel we should have enough uh, to make it to the next round. But looking forward, though, just a quick word. I mean, w what would be your, your standard for this team at this point in the competition speed? W what would be the objective? What would make you happy as a fan in terms of where Jamaica ends this tournament? But I mean, it's teams as written as they are. There is no excuse for us not to win this World Cup. Mm -hmm. So, um, nothing. Uh, um, if if we go to the final and we 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 play very well, 
uh, you know, happen to lose on a um penalties or you know, by a one goal margin, you know, we're still out there fighting, um, showing hard. Then yeah, maybe it will be okay for me, but definitely I'm expecting us to lift this tournament, nothing less. Yeah, well, viewers and subscribers, there you have it from Speed. The man saying nothing other than a Jamaican victory in this Gold Cup competition. You know, this should Definitely. be a historic one for Jamaica. It's first Gold Cup title. And on the way to that trophy, you know, this is a hurdle called Guatemala, which we first need to overcome before, you know, reaching on that podium. But viewers and subscribers, just want to thank you again for the tremendous support you have been showing the platform i'm just gonna continue to encourage you to share the podcast and of course if you haven't subscribed as yet please feel free to do so speedy again just like to thank you for coming on board and of course sharing your profound thoughts and opinions you know it's as always been a pleasure having you on the you know podcast you know some very controversial opinions at times <laughs> you know yes. Me, no, a lot of which proved to be true eventually yeah? <laughs> yes. indeed indeed and we'll definitely be watching this one on sunday to see if your prediction for this one it, it, in fact comes to the fore but viewers and subscribers there you have it from us here on beating the press podcast until next time this is rafa signing off